How's it going guys? It's Mr. Lone Wolf. And uh, today I'm going to go and look at the generators and how they work with these cargo creation zones and then I'm going to do the railway bridge mission afterwards. So you've got this uh, cargo creation zone 1 and you can see like a little lightning bolt where you've got to put the generator and then at that one there actually was a generator there. Uh, this is num generate, uh, sorry, cargo creation zone number 2 down at the bottom in the quarry. You can see the lightning bolt where you need to put it the same as that. But there's no generator there, and then the railway is cargo creation zone number three, and that also needs a generator. So first thing I'm going to do is fly there. You can see in this footage there's already a dolphin there because I just got cleaner footage afterwards. But yeah, I'm going to nip there and we'll uh, test it out. This is kind of skipping back now, so this is me on the way with the old dolphin. Which, uh, for the most part, like the dolphin is definitely a very solid truck, but... I remember quite a few people have been saying about um, like a physics update they've kind of done in this game. And I wouldn't say I've noticed anything like concrete or blatantly obvious that it's changed a lot, but I notice a few sections like this. It's. I don't know if they're necessarily. That's why I just cut ahead a bit, because they're going like ridiculously slow. And it's almost like a bit like the super snow, but it's more like. Or the super mud, but it's. Yeah, more like there's just less grip. Instead of it just automatically making you go slow, it's as if you just wheel spin a lot more on that. And uh, yeah, again, at least there's only little patches of it, and for the most part, you can uh, make pretty decent progress. So anyway, got to the cargo creation zone. You can see it said uh, you need a generator for the power. And again, you can see the other little yellow box with like the lightning bolt. That's you got to park the generator in that. So spin this thing around. It's certainly a uh, not got the best turn in circle. I still really don't like how slow it goes into reverse. Because one thing I used to like doing is as you're turning, slam it into reverse quickly and your wheels light up and you kind of skid the back end round a bit more. But yeah, now it takes so long to uh, get into reverse, it sort of cancels itself out really, it cancels the benefit. Um, anyway, so yeah, you can see with this first cargo creation zone, it actually had a generator there already. Other than that, like you're gonna have to buy them from the trailer store, which they're about the price of normal trailers. I just cut there quickly. I dropped the uh, trailer off in this like generator zone, but I didn't turn the generator on. I didn't realise you had to. So basically, yeah, drive the generator in the generator zone. Click turn generator on, and you'll see a little animation. You see the engine fire up, some smoke coming out of the exhaust, and that. And from now, you can just drop the trailer, detach the trailer. That thing will keep running by itself, and as long as it's in that yellow square. It'll uh, work, and I quite like like the way this works compared to, unless I'm missing something, but on flooded foothills and that, it also just seemed a bit faffing around and a bit annoying. With this, you can see, now I've gone into the uh, zone, it says at the bottom, like, fuel required to, say, build metal beams, and then it says uh, fuel in generator, 1,500, and it's charging me a price in fuel, so it's just charging me 150 fuel for each of those metal beams, which is now deducted. Uh, 150 each time off the fuel in the generator. So now I'm kind of cycling through the stuff. I built a few things and uh, yeah, it was using the fuel in the generator. So now this, I've uh, got the P16. I've just gone and bought a generator. That's where you get them from, the trailer store. And uh, yeah, I'm going to not bother with the quarry one at the minute because it's just like on the arse end of the map and it'll take bloody ages. So uh, yeah, I'm going to go to the railway though. Cargon, uh, Cargon? <laughs> Cargo Creation Zone 3. And uh, yeah, like I said, bought a, a generator. It's unlike that trailer with the double dolly axle, which I prefer that over the single one. Um, yeah, here we are at the railway station. There's me P512. There's me boar. There's a goddamn horse with a vehicle. There's a, uh, another dolphin. I think that's OG dolphin. I was just quickly, while I was driving past it, I just wanted to see what uh, cargo was actually in this section of the railway, because you'll see in a set. We're going to drive around the back and create more cargo. But I don't think it transfers over to this. But it doesn't matter. I was just looking through. Again, it's a little bit confusing. Some of them are just unlimited supplies. Like, it looks like that concrete slab is just... It didn't say an amount left. Some of them you go through. It was saying, though, yeah, there's six cargo left, etc. But, um, yeah, drive around to the back of here. And that's where you can see this big section here where you can build cargo. And I believe you can drop cargo off as well. Because it's got, like, the three menus at the top. But yeah, so far, when I click on it, it's got like a picture of the power thing, and it says, uh, yeah, there's no generator yet. So this is the generator zone, go and drop it off. And uh, yeah, like I said, overall, I think I prefer this way, because it just simplifies things to at least 
there's 1500 litres of fuel in the generator and it charges you a price in fuel uh, for all the different cargo you make so you don't have to remember like oh god was it this and this that make that and it just yeah it was one of them it was like I didn't buy this game to become you know cargo admin <laughs> I want to play snow runner I don't want to play remember what you need to build this and that and all the rest of it yeah this just simplifies it it's like you need fuel to build stuff and that's pretty simple when the generator runs out of fuel obviously you can uh, bring a fuel tank top the generator back up and build more stuff so cycling through this one there's fuel uh, small medium and large pipes and then cargo containers so right now I'm just buying two of each uh, you can see it's charging me fuel so the fuel in generator written slightly below is going down uh, yeah I had enough to build two of everything and then it says again like you need uh, you got no fuel left in the generator so I've just uh, drained that one so now I'm gonna grab a, uh, a Navistar with a the biggest fuel trailer I've got I've not got the uh, off-road trailer pack at the minute I've just skipped mods for a little bit for the first few days while they sort things out for people that are having trouble with mods uh, overall, I believe what's happening is they've updated the game and now some, if not all, of the mods need to be updated as well to incorporate like that new patch, you know, different things have changed. So as soon as we all updated, some of those mods are now a little bit, they're not working too well with the game or they're creating issues. So stuff like the heavy wreckers gone missing off the mod list at the minute, that'll be added back fairly shortly I should imagine. Um, yeah, the guy, is it Puppy Master with the Heavy Wrecker, has probably just got a... I don't know, I honestly have no clue, because I, I don't know what I'm talking about when it comes to coding and that, but I assume he's just got to, you know, fiddle with a few numbers, tell it like the new update for the game or whatever, and then resubmit it to PlayStation or Sony, and um, yeah, if as assuming the mod gets approved, which it should, it'll be back on the list soon. So for people who have lost mods and that, the only other thing I can say as well is... I have mods on my second playthrough. By the way, I left a bit of footage of this thing because it's motoring on pretty nicely. Uh, I do like the Navistar and yeah, it's nice to get a bit of gameplay of that. Um, yeah, on my second playthrough I've got loads of uh, mods turned on and sometimes I turn them off though when I go on my main playthrough. And once I forgot to turn them back on, so when I loaded up the, my second playthrough it said any mods that you've not turned on will be deleted. So I loaded it up and obviously it deleted like my Heavy Wrecker and a few other ones. Later on, though, I loaded back out the game, turned those mods back on, and loaded my second playthrough again. And those mods reappeared in my garage list. A couple of them, though, reappeared right at the bottom of the list. So, for now, obviously, a few people have been saying they've spent a load of money on mods, and then now the game's, like, removed some of them, and they've lost a lot of money. I appreciate that. It should hopefully be temporary. And if you just wait a couple of days, whatever, I don't know how long, but hopefully not too long. When they add the mods back, if you turn the mod back on and then load your um, save up, it should. I can't say 100%, but you might, you may well get your trucks back. It's just obviously while the mod's missing, you can't turn it back on. So uh, yeah, you may well get your money back. If not, like I said, there is always that money glitch to replace any money that the game's taken, which is fair game really because, yeah this game can make you spend money on mods and then they can remove the mod without warning and you lose two three hundred grand so and that takes quite a while to replace um, yeah so anyway drove the, back down to the railway station there's the generator I mean long story short if you want to build a load of cargo you may as well just plan originally bring a generator and a massive load of fuel I mean what I could have done is just done one trip in the Navistar with the fuel trailer and then just uh, winched the generator behind that and uh, yeah, once I've got them both set up, I was able to transfer 1,500 litres over to the generator. And now you can see in here again, fuel, I can build two more of each. And it's uh, costing me... Yeah, it's deducting like the amount of fuel each time. And then that's it. Like, uh, I've just built a load more cargo, drained the generator again, I can now reverse. The only thing is, it's not anything too major, but just bear this in mind, this is why I left this bit in. I'm reversing now and I'm going to reattach the trailer. If I don't reattach the trailer, it'll only offer me to put fuel in my Navistar or the uh, the fuel trailer. Because I connect, I can almost now do like third party refueling where it lets me refuel the generator. And the only reason I mention that is because, say if I came back with something different and I couldn't connect that semi-trailer, I wouldn't be able to top it up. So bear that in mind, you might want to take like 
one of the trailers that just attach to the back of trucks instead. And uh, on my way back, I was just going to take the fuel trailer back to the uh, garage, but then I realised on my way through, I was like, oh yeah, I can just fill it back up with fuel at this fuel station, which is down the road from the railway station, really. So in the end, I thought I'll just park the uh, fuel trailer up there, and I might use it next time. Got it all nice and neat, <laughs> and then I hit the winch and it bloody pulled it, made it all awkward, but I'll just leave it. I abandon it after that. <laughs> I've got a bit of OCD, but not enough to be messing around with stuff like that. So uh, just quickly as well, like I cut most of this out, but I took a, uh, a fuel trailer with a dolphin back to this first cargo creation zone and again did I basically just kept using all the fuel to build loads of different bits of cargo particularly metal beams because I'm going to use them in a minute for the next mission uh, yeah just kept transferring fuel over to the generator it's a little bit like fiddly I suppose that you got to keep transferring it over every 1500 litres but to be fair you can build a decent chunk of cargo for 1500 litres I was just sort of going all out and <laughs> stockpiling so this is the railway bridge I want to build, which is the main bridge. Like I keep end up having to kind of cut through the rocks. It's a little bit sketchy. Drive up the other side of the uh, the muddy embankment, but it also cuts a fuel station out for me. So having that built would be pretty handy. And like I said, a load of the cargo I just built in that first cargo creation zone. So where I was with the dolphin, um, both things I need are in there: uh, the metal beams and the concrete slabs. I wasn't sure when I was drawing this at the minute. I know I could get the metal beams from there. I couldn't remember at the time if I could get concrete slabs or not. But if I couldn't, you can get them from the railway station. That's why I just scrolled the camera up a bit there, sort of cut it out. So anyway, um, yeah, for this one, I'm going to try this collab again. I nearly turned around and just abandoned this because I need four uh, metal beams. So that's going to take eight cargo slots. I was half tempted. This is when I hesitated now because this thing, the trailer, it's nice that it carries eight cargo, but it's just... The game hasn't been designed with a trailer this size in mind, so it's like you, you can't take corners wide enough to where you don't hit the trailer and all the rest of it. Um, I was considering attaching a ramped flatbed to myself and then I could winch another one behind me and that'd have the uh, enough cargo, but again, I'm not too keen on the ramped flatbeds. I wish there was, I know there is with mods, so I will use that in the future, but I wish there was like a base game six slot cargo trailer because a lot of them are like four and five basically and then obviously you jump from five to eight with this I know again with a to carry six cargo you can have like a sideboard bed and tow ramped flatbed but that's now back to my original problem that I'm just really not too keen on the ramped flatbed um, yeah that section there again I mean this thing's a bit of a hauling beast this was actually driving through that water section pretty nicely but then it caught its trailer on the rocks so again I just cut it out because the video, I, I was trying to make this video a little bit shorter, I was trying to aim for around 30 minutes, but it is what it is, it's one of the newer, uh, well, the newest stuff that's out with the game, there's a bit of a game gameplay of the uh, pay star and stuff I've left in as well, so, yeah, got it less than 40 minutes, <laughs> it's a start, so anyway, yeah, get it, have a look, and I realised when I was here, I've got concrete blocks, concrete slabs, etc, so, but I haven't got enough uh, trailer space and everything with me. So I'm just going to grab the uh, the four metal beams. And again, I mean, they've not really helped the situation with, like, this cargo creation zone. You can see where I've just had to drive. It's not too far from the garage, but there's that awkward river bit. Which, again, does feel quite trollish, really. Because if you imagine, like, the, uh, the Black River crossing on Black River. Um, yeah, that's a little bit awkward. Definitely for some of the stock base trucks back in the day when we first probably encountered that. But... Something like a collab would just walk through there, no problem, the dolphin does, etc. This river I've got to cut through just seems a lot more ruthless. And it, uh, again, it doesn't really feel like it's just automatically holding you back like the super mud and that. It just, it's like you're just not getting a lot of grip or anything. And I don't know if that's something to do with like the physics tweaks they've done recently. So, yeah, if anyone can say for certain the things they have tweaked with the... Uh, the physics update or whatever then yeah let us know in the comments I'd appreciate it like I said I've not noticed anything that's kind of night and day different but there certainly is a couple of times tonight I also kind of feel some of the trucks are feeling a little bit I can't work out if it's underpowered or it could be related to um, some people have been saying it say with the new Paystar that might have excessive rev caps on it and it doesn't feel like it's quite applying its power as quickly as like the twin steer does even though they've got the same engine and 
they're a relatively similar truck. But maybe since they've fit like they've added that fine tune gearbox to the game, they might have upset the rev caps, speed caps. I don't know, just something, some kind of behind the scenes mathematic code calculations going on. I don't know if it's just rocked the boat a little bit and it's like made everything feel a little bit funny. So I don't know. Again, I'll be a little bit patient at the minute because when they do a massive update, stuff inevitably breaks. And I don't mind waiting a couple of days or week or whatever while they uh, iron out the kinks. Yeah, as long as it doesn't take too long. So anyway, I cut ahead because it was literally, I, it crawled up that hill so slowly. That's kind of what I was saying where it feels like less power than normal. I kept getting rain all day today. In the end, I just paused the game, <laughs> saved the footage, quit the game, reloaded it, and I finally got a sunny day again. It'd be nice if we had a little bit more control of the weather. We can just decide sunny, rainy, foggy. I mean, we can choose a time of day, which is good. But I just kept cycling through the times of day, and every time I went back to midday, it, uh, it was just raining all the time. It was quite nice for a while, but... Yeah, after hours and hours, it's like... I do... Do like myself a sunny map, <laughs> can't lie. So again, like I said, I left this little bit in because uh, it's a bit of gameplay with the the pace are. It's certainly struggling through here, considering. And I have to say though, to this thing's credit, it's still getting through there on its own. Even the dolphin was having a seriously tough time cutting through here. And yeah, when you look at it, I mean, the wheels, the mud's barely even up to like halfway up the wheel. It probably doesn't even look as deep or crazy as the uh, yeah the Black River crossing, and yet it seriously punishes you for it. I mean, the good thing with this pace are because it's got uh, five axles, ten wheels in total. Like, there's a lot of points for grip, and it seems like that helps in this game. Like, the Dolphin usually seems to have more grip than like the a lot of the traditional six wheel trucks. Uh, Bruce has been a ten wheel truck, one of the only ten wheel trucks in the game for ages. And, uh, yeah, that thing, like, has ridiculous amounts of grip and power and everything. Bruce is just, a, yeah, a very solid truck. Worth getting. But, yeah, with this, I can see what people are saying. There's something that feels like... I don't know if I'd say overall underpowered. It just feels like it's not introducing that power quick enough. It's like it takes 10, 10 or 15 seconds just to kind of wind up and actually give you what you're paying for. And I mean, again, this, yeah, cargo creation zone. Um, you're going to be coming here a lot for cargo, obviously, if they're going to make you have to build it here. And they've kind of done it on the other side of that river. Up the hill's not too bad, but you just see here, it's a bit of a small, awkward yard. Turning the uh, the trailer around with a collab and the eight slot, I just basically had to reverse it back down the hill and kind of ram it. <laughs> That's what she said. Um, yeah, this one, to be fair, this thing's got pretty decent turning circle. The nice thing is... Um, yeah, as it's got the twin axle steering at the front, once you've got it full lock, and it, it does allow you to go pretty far over. I mean, again, the, the turning circle on the twin steer is a bit of a beast. Um, so I was able to spin around in the yard. It's not the best setup now. I wasn't sure when I was looking at it. I even said it myself that the sideboard on the back of the Paystar is a three slot. But when you're looking at it, I was like, well, I don't know. <laughs> what if it is a four slot? What if I can fit two concrete slabs in? I would have much rather any day of the week put two concrete slabs on this and then just got rid of this uh, ramped flatbed but yeah it wasn't to be it is a three slot <laughs> so that's why I took a backup ramp flatbed just to be safe and it uh, it paid off yeah you can see now I mean it's staying in high gear then for most of it I've just put it down into auto now because I, I think I could hear it finally giving up but yeah it's like it's not like it just throws in the towel immediately but it is odd, I get what people are saying, like, even now you can hear, and again, it could be rev caps where it's just like, there is some extra left on top of the engine, and it's just not allowing it. And they do have different rev caps through different trucks, even the same engine, uh, the Dolphin and John. Oh yeah, things did escalate, I did, uh, <laughs> I did get a few loafs. Um, they're coming along though, fuel, all sorts. I'll just say quickly. Um, yeah, I tried to put a winch from the collab to the ramped flatbed and it wouldn't let me for some reason. So then I got my other collab and attached that to the trailer and then it wouldn't let me winch to the other collab. Fortunately, I was about to just drive these separately and then at the last time I checked it, for whatever reason, the winch... It's just obviously some glitch. 
um, it was allowing me to then winch uh, to the collab so I could drive like a big road train so yeah on this setup we've got uh, the flat face collab 8 slot trailer, 4 lots of metal beams and what's it, 5 loafs coming along for the journey and then I've got the long nose collab behind with a ramped flatbed with the 2 concrete slabs and that's got another 3 loafs so I've got 8 loafs, uh, they've all got the roof rack so that's 2,400 uh, repair points or that's 1,600 litres of spare fuel 32 spare tyres <laughs> I'm pretty covered for most situations I uh, I shouldn't run out of fuel anytime soon and uh, yeah it's probably getting on for one of the bigger road trains I've, uh, I've built on this game so far you can certainly still go bigger I could have done another 8 slot trailer etc but yeah if there was a 6 slot trailer that was more like this or a bit like the step deck I'm surprised they can't make the step deck a 6 slot because it can fit the 5 slots on the back and then obviously the bit steps up but again, if it steps up, you'd have to split it into single cargo. But anyway, what I was going to say, if there was a nice six slot, I could uh, just have a six slot on each, two metal beams, one concrete slab each. Aye, that was my fault. I turned the wrong way and uh, crashed into this post. And then I went to go in reverse and I was like, oh no, <laughs> this is not good. Again, though, it's like, look, the wheels on the collab aren't even moving. And it's like, that thing's an absolute powerhouse. So I don't know why. It was uh, butting up against this. But still, I'd have thought the club wheel should have been spinning. So I reversed this up the hill, put the handbrake on, and it's sliding down. Again, I appreciate it's a bit of a steep hill, but this thing weighs a chunk. Is it just me, or have we lost a bit of grip on this game? But again, I don't know if it's like they've turned the tyre grip down on, a, on an individual level with each tyre. I just don't know if the whole game in general, everything feels a little bit slippy. <laughs> don't know what she said. Um, yeah, so in the end, I cut it out again because trying to keep the uh, link down. Um, I stuck a winch from the long nose club over to a tree, dragged it out of the way, so I was able to reverse the club, which it was close though. I mean, we are on a hill, and to be fair, I am pushing. That's part of the reason I wanted to do this road train is because I heard about the physics update. I wanted to kind of push the limit <laughs> of the physics. I'm hauling. I think about the heaviest setup you could get really is the 8 slot, 4 lots of metal beams and 5 loafs sat on top of it and, and I'm towing the club on top of that and uh, yeah I was certainly pushing pushing the limits with the club but this thing has got the beastie engine I think probably the best engine in the game that KZGT certainly works well yeah with the, uh, the special and advanced special but even then this thing was definitely feeling it a bit and I have done uh, road trains in the past some pretty big ones as well some of them were on like Lake Covden and stuff though where I was driving along like the uh, the kind of frozen lake section so there probably wasn't as much resistance there's definitely some areas I've been driving around tonight as well, the rocks are getting, I wouldn't go as far as to say annoying, it's just they've gone a little bit keen on the rocks and for how easily it does kind of lock you up and stop you driving again they don't bother me, it's just like you inevitably end up saying you have to stick a winch out and hoover to something. I mean, it's a bit like that um, river crossing I was on about earlier. There's telegraph poles kind of dotted across the river as well. So to a degree, they've left you something that you can winch to to help pull yourself out. So that's good, and I appreciate there's that option, there's that way out of it. But then it's kind of like if you're going to make a section basically undrivable but then offer winch points and you just got to winch through it sort of defeats the purpose of the game trying to challenge the terrain like you can get over practically any terrain if you just stick if you can stick a winch to something so I like the winch as a fallback but if they've already introduced it as like just a way yeah a thing to do in the game it sort of makes it a little bit less I don't know. I don't, I don't really know how to explain it, but I kind of know <laughs> what I'm saying. I've probably not explained it very well. But again, though, at least I do appreciate that it's only like that little river section, etc. For the most part, these are very well balanced maps. And overall, I think this is probably my favourite phase they've added so far. Um, it was pretty cool when they added Rift. That was a nice map. I, I believe Rift was supposed to be in the game on launch they probably just hadn't quite got that map finished while they launched so that's fair enough um, yeah phase one Lake Cobbed 
was pretty cool, but that's definitely when they dialed the Super Snow up like crazy. Then you added Mandra, which was certainly a bit of a troll as well. Yeah, the whole thing with Phase 2, Flooded Foothills and Big Salmon Peak. I quite like Big Salmon Peak. I like elements of Flooded Foothills, but again, it just felt like the, the mud was dialed up too high. And it just made it a little bit boring in the long run. They also glitched the missions with that, which made some people having to build like 15 cargo uh, cabins. And then they weren't able to fit all the cabins in the section you got to deliver them. And that was all a bit of a mess, so I kind of avoided that to a degree. I got a lot of frame rate issues as well on that phase update for whatever reason. That's when they seem to go mad with the fog and everything as well. And uh, yeah, this one, like I was trying to think the other day which my favourite map is. I said first impressions, I think I prefer this one, Black Badger Lake. That Greenwoods River, I certainly do like. But then yeah, as I keep thinking, it's hard to decide. But it's a nice position to be in where I can't decide which one I like more. Whereas with some other maps, it's almost the opposite, where it's like, I can't decide which one I like less. So they're on the right side of things this time, and yeah, it feels a lot more sunnier, brighter map, open map. I'm liking the mud, I'm liking the views. Uh, I like the layout they've done, I like the verticality, I like the different sections. You've got obviously a lot of bridges, you've got uh, sort of cut-throughs that are going underneath each other. Uh, yeah, there's little river sections to cross, there's sort of a mountain section. A road section generally loop in the map. So for the most part, you've kind of got a big ring road that you can tra traverse pretty smoothly. And then from then on, it's up to you to offshoot down the little uh, rougher terrain sections. But yeah, just overall, it's a, they've thought it out pretty well on this. And that's one thing I have to say to their credit. I mean, even with like Imandra and all that, they don't feel like an afterthought sort of thing. I've, I've had games before where you essentially get some kind of season pass or DLC... And yeah, they just want your money, especially in a season pass scenario, because you kind of pay up front. And you're hoping that the next four DLCs are going to release, in this case, are going to be good. And uh, yeah, some games just do it as an afterthought. And it's like, they've got your money now, so they'd rather not put a lot of effort into it. Yeah, with these phases we've been getting, I, I haven't really ever felt like that. I mean, like I said, I think they went too far with the slowness on stuff like Lake Cov. Lake Cov's not too bad. Wouldn't you know your way around that? things open up a little bit you can like I know the best routes to take on a uh, Lake Cov so I could get to the other side of the map relatively easy yeah Ibandra was definitely uh, a bit of a beast I believe because of this phase 3 update they've obviously added login if you go back to map site um, north port yeah in Alaska uh, that's got a login station on it I know there's a login station in White Valley I can't remember off the top of my head but yeah I'm pretty certain there's login stations on most if not all the regions and various maps. So they've added a load more contracts now to all the uh, regions we originally got, which, again, is pretty cool. I'll certainly be trying some of them pretty soon, doing the login, which, yeah, I like, because uh, the login, I think, is just a pretty cool concept anyway. It sort of, yeah, it does uh, reflect what it was like in the old Mudrunner days, but it's just pretty cool cargo to haul around, and it's nice that they've added a bit of relevance back to some of the base maps because like I said on my main playthrough I've completed just about everything on the base map there is the odd one or two missions I've got to do but they're not even difficult so there's nothing that I know I can't do I just need to physically get around to doing it but yeah I mean that's why I started my second playthrough because I just I wanted more to do and I still hope fingers crossed that they'll add uh, the ability to just reset the missions. You can see though anyway with this road train it's uh well it's certainly not the fastest thing but these both the clubs have got the advanced special special gearbox kind of thing so it is never going to be like the high range type of speeds anyway. But it's certainly uh yeah feeling the weight it's pulling which I don't mind I thought this was quite cool it was quite nice to uh yeah have a big old fat road train again. I do like building my road trains. And as I said, as far as the physics goes, I believe everything was relatively normal up to now. Like I say, there was a few situations where it felt like there was a bit bit more wheel spin than I expected going on. And a little bit less... Uh, I don't know. I think the club seemed like a little bit something was off compared to normal. But then when I got to about now, you'll see the frame rate really uh, wasn't too happy. I kind of had a feeling that 
something was going to go wrong <laughs> pretty soon. Because, yeah, the frame rate was dropping pretty bad at the minute. I've only had that ever happen about two or three times in the entire game. Well, I get it happen on flooded foothills and that quite a bit, but... Uh, when it snowed ages ago on White Valley, that was the only other time, really, I ever had any frame rate issues. And, uh, yeah, I'll tell you, in a minute, I'm still going to drive forward. When I'm literally round the corner from where I've got to drop all this cargo off, um, I have to basically cut ahead so there's, like, a little minute or two's worth of driving that I miss out the footage because basically what happened was when I got to the bridge I dropped the metal beams off and it did the first section and it did the animation where it builds the bridge and halfway through building the bridge animation the game just crashed and blue screened and as soon as it blue screens on the PlayStation 4 I then can't save the footage I press to bring the menu up and it just says something like cannot display the menu at the minute so uh, yeah, so I lost the footage and then obviously because it crashed as it was doing the bridge animation I had to reload the game so it lost like say a minute's worth of save like it loaded a little bit back but I was already parked at the bridge by then so I lost like the last little bit of footage where I was just driving around the corner. And uh, yeah, if there was a way around it, the only way I really could have done it is when I reloaded the game just tried reversing everything slowly down the road <laughs> to restage the last little drive around the corner and one, it wasn't really worth it, and two, good luck trying to reverse that bloody ramped flatbed. So you can see now, the tyres are kind of juddering a bit with the uh, colob, and I can't say I've ever really noticed that before, and I appreciate, again, there's a lot of weight on it, but I just kind of think, like, the colob always had enough muscle to wheel spin rather than judder the wheels, so I don't know. Maybe it's just me, again... I'm sort of mentioning it, throwing it out there, but I'll uh, I'll give it a few days before I kind of yeah, we'll see. Maybe they'll maybe they are tweaking things behind the scenes. It seems they do tweak things behind the scenes in this game that they don't always let us know about. So yeah, you never know from one day to the next really, or one week to the next, if everything is exactly the same as it was last week. But I wasn't low enough on the fuel then. It's not the fuel yet that's making me judder. Well, it's not now. Now I'm out of there. It's kind of just about settling down. I think to a degree that Colob I'm towing, even though it will be driving and putting a little bit of effort in, it's uh, for whatever reason the game just makes you go pretty slow when you're doing like tandem vehicles. I get it to a degree. Like if you were towing something in eighth gear out of eighth in the highway gear gearbox, then yeah, things would probably go wrong before long, but. It'd be nice if they let you have a little bit more speed when you're uh, doing tandem vehicles, because it's a pretty good way to travel. I mean, now I've just got one one giant road train. We needed to build a road train to build a train bridge. That was my thinking on the situation. But yeah, it's just quite a nice, kind of clever way to travel in the game, because then if you roll one of your vehicles, at least you've got another one there that can flip you. And the good news is, as well, it's letting you travel... Uh, I've travelled even through the gateways. After I built this bridge, I drove this whole thing near enough through the uh, gateway to Grainwoods River. Because it was just easier to go to Grainwoods River and drive to the garage there, instead of turning round and driving both of these all the way back to drop the trailers off and everything. But I also wanted to test it to see would it let me... Like, how would it bug out or do anything weird when I travel through the gateway. And it didn't... I didn't have all the loafs on this uh, trailer. You'll see why in a minute. Um, but yeah, I definitely had plenty of loafs. You'll see now when I'm towing along. You heard that unpacking noise. The bloody ramp flatbed at the back has tipped as usual. Really don't like that trailer. So I now reloaded the game to just skip that little bit out. Um, so now I'm in the same place I was, but those that trailer hasn't tipped. It wasn't the loafs falling off that bothered me. I could have like I got plenty of loafs. <laughs> We're, we're definitely packing loaf, but it was the uh, the cargo slipping off the trailer. I just couldn't really be bothered driving a crane all the way down there. And again, I just don't like that ramp flatbed. It tips everything off far too easily. If anything, it needs to be a sideboard, like a ramp sideboard bed or something. So at least if it constantly is trying to tip over and unpack cargo, it'd actually catch it as well. Um, yeah, while the loafs are packed, I can't access the roof racks, but I could pinch fuel off the loafs. So that worked out nicely. 
So yeah, I had to drive both these out. The reason I had to drive them out separately was it wasn't letting me attach the winch again. Again, it's definitely some kind of bug. Yeah, this thing wasn't too keen on uh, climbing out of here. And there, I saved it at that point. And then when that's when I got to the bridge, it crashed and it reloaded the game up and I'm already here. But I was literally around the corner. So I was only like a minute away anyway. And yeah, you can see when you press square at the bottom, it says like hold to change to the next thing you've got to drop off. And obviously this mission is in two stages where it wants the metal beams first and then the concrete slabs. But when I held it to change it, it just brings up the menu and says restart. But I believe that's because with this bridge in particular, it has the animation between each building. So I kind of need to drop the metal beams off first for it to trigger that animation. So it's not letting me do this in a different order, but it appears they've added something in. So for future missions, there might be something where, yeah, say you need metal beams and concrete slabs, it'll let you deliver either one first. I had to get rid of some loaves. I believe part of what made the game crash is I clicked to deliver the metal beams really quickly. All four got off the trailer. That There was like four loaves floating in the air. And then it went into this animation, and it was halfway through that animation that the game, yeah, just blue screened on me. So that's why this time I uh, I recovered a couple of the loafs, and I went a bit slower unpacking the uh, the metal beams just to make sure it didn't fully crash. And that's also why I unpacked these ones as well. That's one concrete slab. That's why I was hesitating now. I was like, well, do I save the footage? <laughs> what if it crashes again? But it didn't, fortunately. So uh, yeah. And that's the second animation, obviously, putting the concrete slabs on. And that's it. Job done. Bridge built. I believe it's about 1,700 odd XP, which is decent. The only thing is that just none of us need XP anymore. So it's like just too late for it to mean anything. And what was the money? Was it 14 odd grand? Which isn't too bad. Um, obviously, you have to go and build the cargo. This mission, yeah, might take you an hour or two, depending. But still, it was, uh, it was pretty good. It's a pretty handy one to get done. It's certainly worth doing sooner rather than later because now I've got a nice clear run through from, say, my garage to Greenwoods River. And, yeah, it just connects the map up well. There's a fuel station ahead. So, all things considered, pretty good. Um, yeah, that's about it for today, though. I hope you enjoyed. I hope that helps. Thanks for watching. Get yourself plenty of loaves, of course, and I'll be back soon.